And the first thing is, before I um, called you, I was watching one of your TED Talks, I think you did in 2005. Um, and I was kind of wondering how much progress do you think has been made since then in the past 15 to 20 years in terms of ending ageing? Oh, a huge amount of progress has been made. Um, I mean, absolutely immense. I'm not really a computer scientist anymore, by the way. I, I did my undergraduate degree in computer science and I spent several years doing artificial intelligence research, but I'm just a biologist these days. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, basically over the past 15 years, uh, the, I, the, the whole concept that I first started putting forward about 20 years ago of comprehensively repairing the molecular and cellular damage that the body does to itself throughout life, um, that concept has become not only totally mainstream and orthodox and generally accepted as a good approach to keeping people healthy, um, it's also, uh, you know, we've seen enormous progress towards actually doing it in the laboratory and even now in the clinic. There are very, of course, there are many different types of damage that need to be repaired, which means that there are many different therapies that need to be developed. But some of them are already in clinical trials, and most of them have got to the point where, you know, they'll, they'll be in clinical trials in the next year or two. Yeah. I mean, I think you argue that there's kind of seven main strands that need to be um, to be worked on. I mean, is progress kind of even across them, or are you going way ahead in some and falling behind in others? Uh, well, I mean, even when we began, there was a, a fairly wide range of progress. So, for example, the one that uh, really you know, has been in the lead throughout is the uh, stem cell therapy, which is the way to repair one of the seven types of damage, namely loss of cells. So, for example, Parkinson's disease is an aspect of aging that arises from the progressive loss of cells in one small part of the brain called the substantia nigra. And um, so stem cell therapy can in principle be used to, um, uh, to fix that, to put cells back that the body is not putting back on its own by cell division. And um, actually there were clinical trials in that uh, more than 25 years ago. Back then there were you know, very patchily successful, uh, but now people know a lot more about how to manipulate stem cells. So, you know, there's, there's great optimism. But that, pro that, that whole area, stem cells in general, has been sufficiently established uh, for a long time now that we at Sense Research Foundation have not really prioritized it at all. We've just let other people get on with it. Uh, but other uh, areas of damage repair uh, started out being completely unexplored, really. I mean, the only reason that I was able to propose particular approaches was by uh, appealing to science that had been developed for completely different reasons, um, you know, by people who were not interested in aging necessarily. And those areas have all moved forward as well, but certainly there remains a, a big spectrum of um, degrees of progress that have been made. That's really why Sense Research Foundation still exists. We are a non-profit a public charity based in California, and the reason we are is because some of the research is at such an early stage that it really isn't amenable to commercial investment. Uh, even, you know, early stage investors who are comfortable with high risk, high reward, they will still not feel that they can really join the dot to eventual profits. But more yeah. and more yeah. of these projects have reached that point. So there are half a dozen projects that we supported over the past decade or more which have now got to the level of being able to have been spun out into startup companies that are receiving substantial investment from the community that we have um, created.